Hi, this is Lee Razzo with Neo4j. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use GenAI foundational models from AWS Bedrock to extract, transform, and load unstructured data into a Neo4j knowledge graph. We'll then deploy a GenAI-based chatbot, which will allow users to make English language queries on the knowledge graph. We'll be using a notebook running in SageMaker Studio to set up a small demo application using Amazon Bedrock, Langchain, and Streamlit using a two-stage process. In the first stage, we'll use the language models to extract entities and relationships from data stored in plain text in XML format. And we will generate the queries needed to ingest that data into the knowledge graph. We'll use zero-shot classification using the Anthropic Claude model. The data set we're going to use for this demo is financial data, containing some information about asset managers and some of the companies and holdings that they own. Once the data is in the graph, we'll set up a chatbot using Bedrock, Langchain, and Streamlit. The chatbot will take plain English language requests from the user, translate that English to cipher queries to query the database. Once it gets results from the database, it will translate those back into an English language response to send back to the user. All of the content and information you need to reproduce this demo can be found in this GitHub repository. The link is in the description below. In addition, you'll also need a running instance of a Neo4j database, which includes the graph data science libraries and the Bloom visualization tool. For this demo, I'm using an Aura DS instance running in AWS, which already includes graph data science and Bloom. Instructions on how to deploy Aura can be found in a link in the description below. And finally, you'll need a Jupyter Notebook instance configured with access to an AWS account enabled to use the Bedrock service. In this demo, I'll use an instance of SageMaker Studio to run my notebook. Instructions on how to set this up can also be found in the repository. Once your notebook is up and running, just install the libraries and dependencies and we're ready to get started. This notebook will walk us through the entire process, starting with configuring and setting up a Bedrock client. This is the schema or the data model, which we're going to use to ingest the data from the text files into the graph. And we will do this in two steps. First, we will extract all of the information about the asset management company. And then separately, we'll extract all the information and data about each of their filings. There are two reasons to do this, partly for quality control and also to manage the resources that we need. This function will read in the raw data from the text file, which looks like this. This is an example that's describing a single company called Tiger Management LLC. You'll find data here about the company itself, including address, etc., as well as information on all of the filings from that company for a given period of time. All of this is in XML format. Next, we define the helper function, which is going to call the language model itself. You can see here all the parameters that we've set. These can, of course, also be configured manually. And down below, we have a couple more helper functions designed to further clean up and parse the data for input into the language model including this one, which splits up the filing info into chunks small enough to be read by the language model. And here we have the prompt for extracting the manager information with the different properties defined separately. And once we run the function with this prompt, we get back the uh, asset manager information in a JSON format, which we can use to process further. And we repeat the process now for the filing information. We define a different prompt here. And now this function will go through the chunks that we created earlier. And it returns 33 filings in JSON format. Now we're ready to ingest the sample data into the graph. So here we have the helper function, which will generate the needed cipher queries.
The credentials for the Aura DS instance that I started up earlier are in this cell and we can create our Neo4j client. And we'll start by setting a few constraints which just make it a little bit more efficient to ingest data. And once that's ready to go, we run the function to ingest the data into the graph with the cipher queries that we generated with the earlier helper function. We have a nice progress bar here to help us see when we're nearly finished. Once this is all done, we will see a graph that looks a lot like this uh, screenshot in the Neo4j browser. So let's go take a look. And we see that we did, in fact, ingest data into the graph. If we click here, we'll get a sample of the graph, which is just as we expected it. We have a node representing the manager and separate blue nodes representing the different companies connected with an owns relationship. So now that that works, let's go ahead and ingest even more data. So this function will go through a few more of the filings to add even more data to the graph so that we can use that as the basis for our chatbot. Once it's all finished ingesting, we can go back to the browser tab and confirm. In fact, we have now added many more nodes and relationships. And let's take a look and see what the graph looks like now. And we're ready now to start building our chatbot. The chatbot in this demo uses LangChain to perform two basic tasks. First, it receives the request from the user in plain English, uses the language model to convert that request into cipher queries. Once it's queried the database, it takes the results returned and uses the language model once more to convert those results back to English language to return to the user. All of the code needed to set up the templates and build the chain are contained within the rest of this notebook. Once we've executed the rest of the code in the notebook, we're ready to build our user interface based on the Streamlit application. For this demo, I've deployed a small Linux instance in EC2. Once the instance is up and running, the rest of the instructions needed to set it up and configure it to run Streamlit can be found back at the repository readme page. Finally, once you're ready to deploy, you should have something that looks like this. On the Home tab, you'll find a number of different charts summarizing the data in the graph, like this Sankey chart that connects managers to assets and groups them by the fiscal period and other charts and summaries of the data in the graph. We can also interact directly with the graph by way of the Bloom visualization platform. As we connect here, we see a graph that looks very similar to what we saw in browser. However, Bloom is a much richer visualization platform, making it easy to explore and experiment with the data, even trying out various graph data science algorithms. We won't go into detail in this video, but you can find all of the documentation on neo4j.com. But now let's get to the fun part. Let's check out our chatbot. Now for this demo, we've added a few sample questions that pertain specifically to the data set we've used. For instance, this one, which of the managers own Amazon? Up there on the upper right, you can see the chatbot is processing the query. And on the right hand side, we see the cipher query that it generated and the formatted results returned from the database. We see Tiger Management LLC, Morgan's Waterfall, Brookfield Corp and Arbor Capital Management. Let's try another one. If a manager owns Meta, do they also buy Amazon? It processes the new request. And there we have it. There's the cipher statement, the cipher query that it generated, and the formatted results, Morgan's Waterfall, Brookfield Corp, Arbor Capital Management. You can also try out questions of your own. For instance, which manager owns the highest value assets? Let's see what it returns. And we get Brookfield Corp owns the highest value assets with some $261 billion of value. 
So there you have it, a simple chatbot created using a Neo4j graph database with AWS Bedrock foundational models. With Neo4j and AWS Bedrock, we're able to extract entities and relationships from unstructured text-based data and generate an entire knowledge graph. We can then deploy a GenAI powered chatbot, allowing users to query that graph in plain English and receive accurate and relevant results. I hope this has been helpful. Please check the description below for links to all of the material and content needed to reproduce this demo. Thanks very much and see you next time.